Let me just show you some of my weekly routines. So I run a, a, um, a creative group where we do daily challenges. This month is run by these two likely lads, Ross and Keith. And here's the list that we're working to. I've been doing this all year. Um, so I'm going for a full year's challenge this year. And I just wanted to show you how I would um, approach something like this painting, which is, it's actually um, a character from a movie called Underworld Evolution. And the guy's name is uh, Marcus Corvinus, and he's actually a, a vampire. But the topic for today is human cyborg scorpion hybrid i think um so i just love the idea that this guy's got a scorpion tail sticking out of the uh, what is actually his wing so he fit it fitted the bill for me and this is how i did it run a, uh, a daily challenge uh, we've been running this uh, for quite some time now so it's if you want to join it I've left some uh, links down below it's a creative group and it's just a daily challenge and there's no holes barred any medium it's just to give you something to focus on for the day if you don't have your creative juices flowing so I draw every day I'm on a year-long challenge um, I've been drawing literally every day as you can see. I'll just show you my iPad. Um, in fact, I'll show you Procreate as the creature I'm going to design today. I'm going to show you how we painted this one up today. Um, so these are my calendars and every single day for one year I'm doing a creature which is quite challenging. Um, it has left me quite um, worn out sometimes because getting through one every day is, you know, it can be uh a, a lot to do but it does speed me up i found that um it, it really does improve my ability to bash out concepts really really quickly so um and sometimes they're rubbish and sometimes they're good and they go on to to other things so for today i'm looking at mutant human scorpion hybrid so I was looking at that and I've done tons of um, scorpion human hybrids, weirdly enough, I don't know why. These two reprobates at the top are two of the members that chose all of these uh, prompts for this month. So that's Ross and Keith. Um, so a big shout out to them, to, uh, to, to, to them for putting this prompt together for this month. Um, so um, let's just move on to, let's have a look at the time lapse so we'll go into this one and i'll just it's a it's about five minutes and i'll just talk you through my process so what i generally do is um if you for for you to understand what i'm doing here now just unfocus your eyes for a minute and you'll see that i'm not trying to sketch the actual shape at all i'm using reference here and i use marcus um corvinus from the underworld uh, evolution film and, and I just thought that even though he's a bat creature, he's obviously a vampire, been bitten by a vampire. I just love that idea that he's got like his wings are um, spikes that, 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 that kill his victims. So I just thought he is the ultimate human uh, scorpion hybrid. So I used him as a, a, as a, a sample. So I downloaded some references. I've got them uh, off screen. So I use either Visref, which is on the iPad as a reference tool or I just have it in Pinterest or on a screen in front of me, depending on where I am. So I am using reference heavily here. Don't always do recommend it, but it, you know, it's, it's kind of like, it's, it, it, it's really up to you as you're learning. And what I do is I block out with lots of different colors. Um, I, I generally don't worry too much in the first few minutes about what color it is. I normally just, and I don't go black and white so I don't do alpha sketches um, and I don't do, I don't do silhouettes that often I just go for light so I'm looking for the light source all the time so here again if you unfocus your eyes you can see I've I've already blocked in most of the lighting in this scene um, so if it's not reading well at this point then sometimes I abandon it um, and sometimes I just fight it and fight it for quite you know probably too long but I can generally get a feel of whether it's going to work for me or whether I'm on point with the with, with the reference. Um, so I'm checking it over here all the time. Great thing with Procreate and Photoshop is the, is the things like the Liquify tool. 
Um, so in here, what you'll see me do quite a lot is what I can't do in the real world, which is when it, it just feels like it's gone off, I'll just use the, the liquefier and I'll just pull it back into the right, you know, maybe the eye's a bit high or the nose isn't quite right. But overall, more than anything, I'm just focusing on the the lighting. So I'm looking for lights coming from the top right, the, um, the you know, it's going into darkness. I never, ever use black. I always use a, a darker colour and I go right around the colour wheel. So it, the, the, the thing that... Um, you might notice here is that there's crazy colors going on so you've got blues and greens and yellows and different hues all over that color wheel same sort of saturation level so i, I generally use the um hsb or hsl slider so i use hue and that's your color and i slide around left and right i'm not really bothered most of the time i keep it in um i keep it in one one sort of level but a different hue so um, it you know it 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 um it, it can be that I you know I'll do the greens down here at the bottom, and then I'll just slide across and make them a little bit more blue and throw some blues in. I do do some what we call rim lighted. So I'll, I, on this one early on, I drop some of the harsh highlights uh, or, or or lights coming in from the left and the right because it's a very dark piece, and I wanted to really establish where that was going. And then I just build up the layers over and over and over again. And I, and I, I go for, you know, I, I don't go darkest darks first to build backwards and I don't go lightest lights and come the other way. I, I generally just look for where's the light coming from, establish it, establish where the shadows are, look for something called ambient occlusion. So that's the areas that are not cast shadows, but they're areas that are occluded by something else. And a good example is under the chin, under the nose, very deep under the eyebrow. Um, a little bit inside the ear where light just can't get and it's and it's not bouncing around and that, that's where you'll find your occluded areas so that's the same if you come from a 3d background you'll understand a lot about that but what i'm doing there is i'm looking for the you know i'm looking for the lighting to be the thing that drives the the, the look of the scene and th these sort of things take about um between so like 25 30 minutes to to an hour maximum i won't take any longer than that and quite often they, they don't work out. They don't they don't work for me. And, and as I say, I abandon them them at that point. But this this one worked well. It was working well. I was thinking I might change it from the from the original design, but it actually hit the beat quite well. It it kind of gave me a human scorpion hybrid, even though he is a vampire. So I felt like I'd achieved um my kind of evening's goal with this one. I love the fact that it's got that specular highlight. You saw me then just change the eyebrow a little bit and you can see how it changed that expression. So that's what I was talking about when I was saying about um, it, it, will, um, it, it will really change it. So that's that one done. Um, what that ended up like, how it finished, was something like... Uh, have I got something close to the finished one? Uh, let's go back to... Let's take you back to Procreate and I'll show you how I ended the evening with that one. Not that one, that's an alpha brush. So let's have a look, November. Let's see how we finished the evening. So that's how we ended that one. Um, and as you can see, tons of different colours in there. I got a bit of background in, which is very indistinct because I blurred it. Um, and then sometimes what I do, um, and, and this is depending on what level you are with your anatomy skills, I like to understand what it is that I've just drawn. So you could do this the other way around, and, and some artists do, do do this, and they work out the anatomy, but I was really just going for a look and a feel, so I, I wasn't really thinking about um, the anatomy so much um, in this early stage. Let me just show you what I mean. So I'll do it with white over the top. And I'll use, these are my, I've got tons of brushes that I've bought over the years here. Um, so uh, a couple of things to, to, to note really. So obviously forget the, forget the, you know, the tail in the background. I'm not so worried about that, the, the, the scorpion tail or this back bit here. Because none of this musculature here is any, is, is realistic at all. How it attaches to the back, I hadn't concerned myself but what I always focus on is what's going on in like these kind of areas, and what what the um, 
what the con what the photograph that I'm, I kind of based it on gave me was these kind of highlights here because these kind of show that there's bumps in the in the skin. But if you don't know what's going on underneath there, you're kind of just drawing shapes. So what I'd encourage everyone to do is kind of learn your, your anatomy quite well. So I know that 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 this here is the the, the deltoids comes and it's a it's a three part muscle. It's the front, the back, and the middle basically. And comes down here and that lump there that white lump there is actually one part of the tricep so once you understand what that muscle's doing and then what this muscle is here which is this is the teres major coming from the back strapped down here by the latissimus dorsi and you've got going up here into what we call the, the, the traps and then it doesn't show much on this drawing but these things here are what will hold your head up so if you know that they're there underneath, you might be able to spot them, but you couldn't really on this drawing. So that means then here, there's this, this what we call a fossa, this little indent. And then these are um, kind of parts of the pectoral muscle that are being driven from the middle of the chest here, over the top of the, of the clavicle here that comes out. To, this is called your acromion process here. So... When you've learned all this, and this is your bicep that everybody knows this muscle, which means these things underneath here are down here, your serrat serratus. These are what attach your muscles to your ribs. But look at that in a few seconds. You, if you know where those muscles are and you and you start um, doing that kind of work where you're saying, right, wh how, where does this start from? Where does this go? They're called insertion and origin points. You can pretty much draw anything without even even going away from the reference so if i needed to change this drawing up a little bit it wouldn't be so hard really because if, if you know where all those muscles are where they're going where they attach you can generally pick up um uh, and change it as you need to so um that's that's sometimes what i do obviously it takes a lot of study um there's lots of different you know ways to learn this stuff so the main one I'd say online would be something like Scott Eaton's courses. Uh, you can do Proco. Uh, and there's tons and tons of references, really. As long as you're learning from someone who's at that level and really knows their stuff, there's, there's plenty of places for you to learn this kind of stuff. Um, what that looks like or what it can look like at, at, as, you, as you finish is kind of this. So, you, you know, those, those muscle groups that I showed you, they're all broken down and they're all clearly defined there. Um, and it doesn't matter whether you do it like a quick sketch like this or you, you know, if you, you know, you could even just, you know, layer, layer, um, layer them over each other. So if you take the, for example, the, 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 this one and you've got that coloured one underneath, you might want to lay one over the other and it kind of really helps you understand what it is you've made. Or you might even want to go and do this piece of work first before you start going into something like this. Um, but so, some people make this look very, very easy. And let me assure you, from, from years of practice, I'm still nowhere near where I want to be. This is not an easy thing to do. It's about practice, the right kind of practice, over and over and over again. Not just repetitive practice of doing the same thing, but finding out where you're going wrong, finding out do you know what this muscle is? Do you know what what the you know what what this kind of deltoid is is made up of? And these are the three parts I was telling you. Um, do you know where it starts? Do you know where it ends? Do you, do you know what it does when your arm goes up? And th those are the kind of questions you want to be asking yourself. And what you'll find, whether you're a two D artist or a three D artist or someone like me that has to do quite quite a few different types is that one informs the other so you'll, you'll often hear me or see me in my videos using my own reference so I might have drawn it first sometimes I've sculpted it and then painted over it but you, you, you'll find as as you uh, adapt and learn and, and again I, I, I often have you know huge doubt with my own work so I find that I beat myself up and go over and over and over things just to make sure I'm I'm learning them you know in in the, in the correct way but it it takes a while to 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 get to the level that where you you can say you're happy but just be mindful that you should be looking to improve against your own work from today to to tomorrow or from this week to next week 
Stop looking at Art Station and comparing yourself to anyone there. Stop looking at any of the, you know, the big galleries on Pinterest or um, DeviantArt or, or wherever. Just look at where you want to go. So define the style and the look that you want to go towards. And then focus on just improving bit by bit and find the right teacher. So find the lessons that will teach you all of this stuff um, and and make sure it's it's someone like, say, Terrell Whitlash or Bobby Chu. I've given you loads of names now of people that I've learned from over the years. Um, and, and just take your time with it, but try and show some improvement every week. Get yourself an online gallery if you don't already have it. And then work towards that kind of um, improvement that, that makes you feel good at the end of a, of a month and you can see that you've moved forward. By all means, join our Facebook groups. We've got iPad sculpting groups. We've got, a, you know, th this one is mixed media. So you can use anything from clay to an iPad to a Wacom to Photoshop to VR to ZBrush. It doesn't matter with this group. It's just about we have a daily prompt and we all get going with it. So have a look. See if you want to join us um, in there. Uh, you don't have to do it every day. Obviously, quite a few of us, you know, try and keep up with that daily daily challenge, which is quite humongous really and it, and it does get too much sometimes but these are the kind of things we're doing every day if you know you might know me from my ipad work you might know me from my vr work or or zbrush work um but generally i, I i'm a i'm a, a commercial artist so I, uh, I have to deliver this stuff day in day out for clients and i'm still massively passionate about the whole industry so i'm as as, as much as covid's been tough and the industry's tough my my drive is the art and, and either making it or teaching it. So um, I just wanted to share some of that. Again, it's very different than our normal videos, but I hope it's given you some insight to how I'd come up with a piece um, like this. And, 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 and again, this is this is actually a vampire from a very famous, you know, film, but I've I've used the prompt that we came up with and I've and I've kind of used mashed the two together. So I feel quite comfortable um within my own rules because it's only up to me really isn't it you know i can draw anything i want in the group as can anybody else so the there are no rules at all but if you know if you feel like you've put some in there then then all well and good so hope you've enjoyed listening to to me waffle a little bit and um that's my uh my entry for today and that'll go on the that'll go on the calendar actually which is um my let me show you my november character before we wrap it up so this is my November character, uh, sorry, calendar, and you can see the variety of work. There's a robot dolphin there, a zombie lemur. There's a lot of zombies because of Ross this month. Um, I got like a war horse, cyborg, spider dog, bat. Um, um, what's this? That's um, can't even remember what that is. Robotic spider, a monkey, a leopard seal, uh, or a dog seal. A mutant frog, uh, it's called a passenger whale, um, so all sorts really. Um, so and now we're going to add the um, human, what was it, human, cyborg, scorpion, I don't know, mashup. But I hope you enjoyed it and you have a great week. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this kind of content, give the video a thumbs up. We drop videos on a Wednesday and a Friday and by all means, uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell and we'll let you know when the, the next one is, is dropping.